Hey guys, it's Emily and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my April TBR. So in April I will be participating in the Owls Readathon hosted by G over at Book Rose. I will leave the link to both the G's channel and the announcement video in the description box down below if you guys want to check that out. But it's basically a month-long readathon that takes place throughout the entire month of April where we are taking our OWL exams just like in Harry Potter. I am so excited for this round. I loved participating for the last round and I just fell in love with this readathon. So very excited for this new round. I will also be participating in the Basically Readathon hosted by Basically Brit. This is taking place on April 5th and it is a 24 hour readathon where the challenge is to read a book that has been on our TBR forever. So without further ado, let's dive into the TBR. This round I will be taking the career of Trader of Magical Tomes, which is basically like a bookseller. So I just really like that. You guys know that I felt my owls last year, but I do not plan on failing this year. And I'm very excited for this new career that's been added and I think it fits me really well. I love books, I love reading. So in order to become a trader of magical tomes, we need to take four different owls. So the first exam that I will be taking is Ancient Runes, and for that we had to pick a book with a heart on the cover, and for that I chose The Geography of You and Me by Jennifer E. Smith. I'll be honest, I struggled with this challenge. I didn't have anything on my TBR that had a heart on the cover, so I had to buy a book for it, and I chose this one. In this book, we are following our two main characters, Lucy and Oliver, and one night they get stuck on an elevator in New York City as there is a citywide blackout. Eventually they get rescued and after that they spend the night exploring the darkened streets of Manhattan but when the power comes back on so does reality and Oliver is moving out west to meet his father Lucy is moving abroad with her parents and basically we're following these two teens as they try to communicate and just develop this relationship over postcards emails so on and so forth and I'm very excited I love contemporaries and I feel like this is a perfect fit for a readathon and also I love the idea of a mixed format book I tend to really like books that are more than just a book and I feel like this one is gonna be perfect I read another one of Jennifer East Smith's novels before and I really enjoyed it so I'm hoping I will love this one just as much. The second exam that I will be taking is Charms and for that we have to read a book with a white cover and for that I chose Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I'll be honest with you guys I have no idea what this book is about. I think it has like some kind of disability rep if I'm not mistaken but I've heard a lot of people on booktube brave about this and I just thought that since it is a romance novel and romance is my favorite genre this would be perfect for me so I, I have high hopes apparently this is even going to be a trilogy where we follow follow the different sisters, like the brown sisters. The next exam that I will be taking is History of Magic, and for that I have to read a book that features wizards or witches, and for that I chose Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So you guys know this is the fifth book in the Harry Potter series, and as you guys may know if you've been following along for a while, I have been slowly rereading the Harry Potter series for the very first time since I first read them. As soon as I saw this challenge, I knew I had to pick this. I have been meaning to continue on with my reread, but now I have the perfect excuse. This is a bad boy, like, yeah. A very big book but for a month-long readathon this is perfect and since it is a Harry Potter theme readathon it makes sense that I'm reading a Harry Potter book. Next up we have Transfiguration and for that I have to read a book that features shape-shifting so I chose Hunted by Megan Spooner. So this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and we are following our main character who is the daughter of a hunter. Her father has been hunting this beast for ages and one day he goes missing and Yeva, the main character, knows that her father went too far, so in order to find her father, she will have to track down the beast. I am super excited for this, and I'm not sure if it actually features shape-shifting, but as a Beauty and the Beast retelling, I feel like it will. This is also going to be my pick for the Basically Readathon, because I added this book to my Goodreads TBR in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, so it has been a while, and I'm very excited to get to it, and look at this gorgeous cover. So those were all the four books that I needed in order to become a trader of magical tomes. However, this year, G has added kind of extra challenges if we want to challenge ourselves a little bit more and I have decided to take on a seminar as well. So I will be taking the Magical Shop Management Seminar. I feel like this is a perfect fit with my Trader of Magical Tomes career because if I want to open my own magical bookstore, this is going to be perfect for me. For that seminar, we have to complete our arithmetic exam and for that we have to read a book that is outside of our favorite genre and as I have mentioned before, my favorite genre is romance. So I have decided to go with a fantasy novel and I chose Soul of the Sword by Julie Kagawa. This is a sequel to The Shadow of the Fox. I read it last year and I really enjoyed the plot. This is a fantasy book set in a Japanese inspired fantasy world and there is this prophecy that the person who holds this ancient scroll don't remember the exact name of it, will be able to wake this ancient dragon and create a world of darkness and chaos. You may go our main character has been raised in this temple that protects this scroll and one day the temple gets burned down and as Yumeko runs for her life, she takes with her the scroll to take to this other temple and on her way there she meets this guy who works with the Shadow Clan who is also after the scroll. So she makes a deal with him that she will take him to the scroll if he gets her to the temple. What he doesn't know though is that Yumeko has a scroll and Yumeko is also half Kitsune. So I really enjoyed the first book. I was so surprised by how much 
I actually enjoyed it. And so I'm very excited to dive into the sequel. Apparently it leaves us on a cliffhanger and it gave me a lot of like Mulan vibes. And as someone who absolutely loves Mulan, I just adore this series. All right, so that's it for my Owls TBR. Those are all the books that I need to complete in order to become a trader of magical tomes and to complete the seminar. However, this year I am trying to read 120 books and so that means that I have to read about 10 books per month and so I thought that since I am trying to read 10 books anyway, might as well make them fit with the challenges set by G for the Owls Readathon. So we'll actually try to go for all 12 Owls, which might be a little bit crazy. I don't have to do that, but I just thought that it would add a nice challenge and maybe get me out of my comfort zone and get me reading books that have been on my TBR forever but I just haven't really gotten around to. So I'm gonna go through each and every prompt. Those are books that I want to read and that I am hoping to get to this month. However, they won't be as much of a priority as the ones that I just showed you guys. So let's dive in. So for astronomy, we have to choose a book that we will read mostly when it's dark outside. And I chose a book that I could read possibly in one sitting because even though my current job situation is kind of precarious, I'm not really sure what's going on. I will explain everything in the upcoming vlog if you guys want more information about that. But normally I would probably read during darker times anyway because I work full time. But I chose a book that I could read in one sitting. And for that, I have chosen in a graphic novel and that is Check Please Volume 2 by Ngozi Yukazu. So the book is actually not out yet. It comes out on April 7th but I have pre-ordered it and I'm very excited to get to it. I absolutely loved the first volume. We are basically following this boy called Biddy I believe and he is a former figure skater and he gets onto this hockey team at college and we are following him along. He bakes, he is such a sweet boy and I really loved the first volume so very excited for the sequel. And since it is so short it's going to be perfect to read in one sitting when it's dark outside. For Care of Magical Creatures, we have to read a book that has a creature with a beak on the cover, and I chose The Tyrant's Tomb by Rick Riordan. This is the fourth book in the Trials of Apollo series, and I really enjoy Rick Riordan's work. And the series, we're following the god Apollo, who has been cast down to earth by Zeus because he did something very terrible. So he's being put into this teenager's body, and he doesn't have any of his powers anymore, and he has to go through different trials to prove to Zeus that he is worthy of being a god. The new one came out like in October, I think. Haven't read it yet, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity because I don't know if you can tell, this creature has a beak. I think it's a bird, not entirely sure. For Defense Against the Dark Arts, we have to read a book that's set at sea or on a coast, and I chose Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levin Seller. This is a sequel to Daughter of the Pirate King, which I really enjoyed. In the first book, we are following Alosa, who is the daughter of the Pirate King, and she gets captured by this uh, enemy ship who is asking for ransom in exchange for her body, I guess. But lots of things happened, and I honestly really enjoyed it. It's a pirate story, so of course it's set at sea, and now I'm very excited for the sequel. One of my best friends read this and really enjoyed it, so I'm hoping I will enjoy it as well. For Divination, we are going to be playing a little bit of a game. Basically, we have to prepare a TBR and uh, set numbers to the books that are on that TBR and then use a random number generator to pick our read. So I'm going to show you guys some of the books that I'm hoping to read soon. And a lot of them are like sequels or next book in a series or a book that's very hyped, for example, that I just really want to get to. We're going to see which one the number generator tells us to read. The first one that I'm hoping to read is Daisy Jones and the Sixth by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really enjoyed The Seven Husbands of Ellen Hugo and I since I've been really in the mood to read this one. I've heard so many great things about this book, so of course I really want to read it. Book number two is Finale by Stephanie Garber. This is the third book in the Caraval series, and I have been meaning to finish this trilogy for a while. I really enjoy it. It's just, I don't know, I was really into it when it first came out, but for some reason, like as the series went on, I lost interest. Like I really love these books. It's just that I never seem to want to pick it up. So I feel like maybe the number generator will make me want to pick it up. Book number three is In the Afterlight by Alexander Bracken. This is the third book in the Darkest Minds trilogy, or maybe should I say series? Not entirely sure. But I read the first two books during a 24 hour readathon. I really enjoy them. I just never really got around to reading the third book. So maybe today is going to be the day that I am meant to start this book. Book number four is A Reaper at the Gates by Sabata here. This is the third book in the Amber Quartet and I really enjoyed the series. I've been putting off reading this book because we didn't have a release date for the fourth book and I knew that I didn't want to wait too long between reading this book and the next one. So I waited, I waited and finally we have a release date which is in December this year. So I thought that it maybe it was time for me to finally read this one. Book number five is Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. This is the second book in the Renegades trilogy and I didn't love the first book. I'll be honest, if you guys remember, I filmed a reading vlog for it and I didn't fall in love with the first book. However, I'm curious to see where things go. I really like the way it ended and it gave me like hope for the next book. So hopefully I will enjoy this one. I really like Marissa Meyer's writing. I love the Nuno Chronicles. It is one of my absolute favorite series. So 
I have high hopes for this book. And finally, book number six is The End on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This is the third and final book in the Truly Devious trilogy. I initially wasn't going to read this because I honestly didn't love the first two books. Like, they were okay, but I'm just not interested enough to continue reading this. However, one of my friends, and this is her copy, she was like, you need to read this. I need to discuss this with you. So I was like, uh, maybe I'll read it just so we can discuss it together. And so this is it. <laughs> so now let's do the number generator thing. So it's book number six. I don't know if you can really see, but that means that we will be reading The End on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. Not my first choice. I was really hoping I wouldn't get this one. But at the same time, since it's my friend's copy, I feel like it's a good thing because I, I want to get to it as soon as possible so I can give it back to her. For Muggle Studies, we have to read a book set in the Muggle world, which is a contemporary, and I chose A Question of Holmes by Brittany Cavallero. This is the fourth and final book in the Sherlock Holmes series, which is a gender-bent retelling of Sherlock Holmes, where we are following the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. I'm super excited for this book. I'll be honest, I am kind of scared just because I read the third book, The Case for Jamie, and really enjoyed it, and I thought the ending was quite satisfying. I knew there was another book coming after it when I read it, but I don't really know where we can go with this. I'm excited though, because I love this series. I think it is such a great murder mystery thriller YA series. I'm still very excited for it. I really love these characters. I love this series. I love this story. So very excited to see where things go, but kind of curious and kind of scared a little bit. For Herbology, we have to read a book with a title that starts with the letter M, and I chose Mirror Mirror by Jen Calonita. This book is actually not out yet in paperback. I know the hardcover has been out, but I have pre-ordered the paperback. It comes out on April 7th, and I am excited to get to it. So this is the sixth book in the Twisted Tale series. In this series, the authors take one element from a Disney story that you love. So it could be Snow White, like it is the case here. They twist the element to make an entirely new story. So in this one, the twist is that what if the evil queen poisoned the prince. I'm very excited. This is the only thing that I know about the plot of this book, but I knew I had to get it. I really love this series so far, and I'm excited to see where this one takes us. Finally, for potions. All right, so I'll be honest. I don't really have a book for that. I'm not even sure I'll get to potions. This is the only exam that I really struggled with because we have to read a book that's under 150 pages. And at first I thought, you know what? Piece of cake. I'll read Every Art of Doorway by Shalom McGuire. For some reason, I thought it was like 90 pages. I was like, perfect. I'll order it. It's been on my TBR for ages. And and I found out afterwards, after I ordered it, that this book has 173 pages. So it's a little bit bigger than 150. And I don't really own any books that has less than 150 pages. I didn't want to order anything, even though I did order Every Heart of Doorway, but that was mostly because I wanted to read it anyway. So I was like, you know what? I don't care. But now I'm kind of stuck. I don't really know. I think I might read one of the Ghost of the Shadow Market novellas by Cassandra Clare. Not too sure though. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm struggling with this one. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below, but I I don't think I'll be completing potions and that's okay because I don't need it anyway. But yeah, struggle a little bit with that challenge. We'll see if I even like get to it. But that concludes my TBR. As you can tell, I have quite a couple of books. I'm quite happy with my selection. I'm very excited to get into the owls. April cannot come soon enough. And if you guys want to know what I think about these books, which ones I will actually end up reading, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I will be vlogging weekly like I did last year. So weekly vlogs you can expect for the owls readathon. And that's it for my TBR. Let me know if you guys are participating in the owls readathon too, or the basically readathon. I'm excited for both. And if you're participating in the owls, let me know in the comments down below which career you've chosen and also what are some of the books that you're planning to read. So I guess that's it and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!